I think this assembler is getting too big. It is now currently 6K. So I've been thinking of ways to try and shrink it, to simplify and do, th do more things using the same code. And I think I've got something. So here is our instruction set in the, uh, the column base broken down with by the A, B and C fields to make it easy to understand how it all works. We have, in terms of addressing modes, we have our eight here, nine for this one, and 10 for this one plus 11 if we're going to count the implicit argument instructions, which I suppose we'd more or less better do. However, how many ways are there to actually encode instructions in the machine? Well, there's the, uh, the single byte instructions, which take an implicit argument. There's the zero page instructions. These take a single byte argument. That is used by uh, b equals 1 uh, indirection operators, b equals 0 and b equals 4. Uh, normal indexing with zero page argument which is b equals 5 and this one, the immediate constant which is b equals 2. So that the same encoding works with all of these. So that's two. Then we have the relative branch. Uh, this is this is special because it needs uh, special treatment for encoding the relative branch. So that's three. Then we have the absolute addresses, which is these b equals three. Uh, these b equals six and seven. Also, these and our indirect jump. So that is, if I remember correctly, four different ways of encoding instructions. Just four. So if we look at our code over here, now I put the scroll bar. Down here under place code, this code needs to know only about instruction encoding forms. And I think we've got them all. This chunk of code in Record Expert is handling all the uh, encoding forms that we need to know about. Absolute addresses work, we've tested that. Zero page addresses work, complete with instruction shortening if necessary. Relative instructions work. And the other two forms, the one other form, is handled under record bytes because it never goes through this code path. So the bulk of the complexity is not in dealing with the four encodings, it's dealing with the 11 addressing modes. And that's happening up in the parse code here. However, again, however, because there are only the four uh, instruction encodings, then whatever addressing mode we parse, it has to turn into a, uh, a single byte value, a single byte relative value, a two byte value, or nothing at all. So our parse ALU argument routine here. If we can generalize this to parse any arbitrary operand for one of these instructions, we can use this for everything. The only extra thing we need to do is to have somewhere a table of, given each mnemonic, not opcode, but mnemonic, which dressing modes are valid for it, and what opcode should it be using. And given that information, we have a complete parser. So up here we have our tables of instructions. These are 
the mnemonic to the opcode. So we'll need to add some more to that. And we're also going to combine these to a single table. So where is our instruction record here? So we have the name, we have the opcode, and we have the valid addressing modes. Now it's really tempting to use a bit field for this. The only problem is we have more uh, encodings than we have available bits in a byte. So either we have to use a two byte bit field or we indirect it. And I'm going to go with indirection. So we are going to have a enumeration of encoding types which will be these are going to be all of the unique given a single mnemonic what encodings are valid for that mnemonic so this is going to be the different classes of mnemonic or actually actually this might be premature optimization how many instruct how many mnemonics do we actually have let's combine these together this will stop our program from working Here is where the ALU mnemonics start. Here is where the branch instructions start. In fact, I have missed a bunch of these. So that's going to be these ones down here. Oh, uh, sorry, these instructions that take A as a parameter, that is going to be our 12th addressing mode. So let me just add that so I don't forget about it again. So I got these, but I missed these. X A is eight A T A X is eight A D X is C A uh, Nop is E A Um, got those. I think I've got those. Yes, I've got some of them. Okay, so let's add the weird ones from the top block. So we've got JSR is zero uh, LDY. There are more LDYs. I think we are generating some of those, but anyway. Uh, A zero. CPY C0 CPX P0 LDX A2 and that uses these as well uh, bit 
Don't think we've done bit yet. And that has a second form over here. We've got these. Oh, we haven't done STY. A4. Uh, where is STX? I think that's down here. There it is. Um, and I think we're done. I think that's the lot. So how many is that? So the end is 607, the beginning is 558, so that's 49 instructions that we care about. Right, so we are going to have a 2 byte bit field, because trying to do this the clever way is going to use more than 49 bytes. So it is cheaper to do this the dumb way. And much easier to enter all the data into. So let's just sort these alphabetically. So there is then going to be a second field which is going to describe all the addressing modes that these use. And in fact, we are going to have to be slightly cleverer than that because some of these instructions have exceptions. For example, this. If we were to just say that LDY supports uh, an immediate form, because the immediate form is B equals 2, our code will try to encode LDY using this instruction, A8, and that's not going to work. So we are going to have to cheat. And I'm not going to make you sit through me typing in a whole block of data like this. So I am just going to skip ahead. Apart from anything else, I need to think how I'm going to name all this stuff to make the table easy to read. So I've actually split up the addressing mode enumeration from the B value enumeration. So here we have the addressing mode and I found a new one uh, which is LDX here and STX. Here in the column which normally does zero page comma X is in fact a zero page comma Y so that's nice. Uh, so yes, I have the addressing modes here, and I have the B values here, and then I have, here's my table of mnemonic to addressing modes, and here is the table of addressing modes to B values. And now find instruction returns a pointer to the instruction, because we're going to need to pull these values out. So I need to go and change the code for these. So this is going to be Hang on, hang on, this is all going to be our new parser code. So, uh, so if this is not an instruction 
then we want to skip this stuff. Uh, once we're into the instruction, then there is no going out. So I can put all the parse code in the conditional here. Or I can put in a go to. Let's just stick it in here. Okay. So we need to first parse the argument. That will then return the addressing mode of the argument. If this addressing mode is not valid, which we can easily check with Vincent, uh addressing modes and AM. Invalid addressing mode. Okay, what did I call that? Encodings. That's wrong. Any now? Addressing modes. Right. So we now have the instruction and a parsed parameter. So we want to either turn it into a expression record or bytes. And I can't remember where we were doing that. Right, it's up here actually in add expression records, so we don't need to worry about it, which is nice. Now, this should apply to all encodings, provided op is set correctly. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, let's see if you go here, is figure out the B value for this instruction which is done by this piece of code. Uh, we then want to add it. Like that. And we are done. That is all that code needs to be. Okay, this piece of code, parse ALU argument, now become parse argument. Right, now, here, we have just parsed an expression, but we don't know whether this is one of these or one of these. So we're just going to have to return am im, and then down here in the parse code, uh, we are going to have to fudge it. So if if this is a special immediate. and am is a normal immediate, then switch this to ims. Uh, we can put an else if there, because we know that this is, this is a supported addressing mode, because we checked that here. So that is nasty, but it should work. Let's do the rest of this. Um, this piece of code. Now, when we get a closed parenthesis, that's going to be something like, like that. We are expecting there to be a Y after it. However, that is not true anymore 
because if this is a jump, then that is a valid addressing mode. So we get a closed parenthesis, we read the token, we now have to look at the next token. If it's not a comma, then this must be a AM uh, wide indirect. Otherwise, it must be a Y. So this then turns into uh, AM Y pointer. But this piece of code, this has to be a AM X pointer. Okay, now this stuff, this is if you get a, a normal uh, expression followed by comma X or Y. If it's X, then that is either, what do I call it? X ofs, uh, X offset zero page. Otherwise, it's an AM X off. So if it's not an X, then previously this could only be a Y offset, but that's not true anymore too. Because this can now be a Y off the, like so. Uh, otherwise, this is as before, it's AM zero page, or otherwise, it's a simple AM abs. Um, and there is one more case we need to put in, which is if it's an A. So if it's an ID, then If the token length is one and the first character of the pass buffer, which is the only character, is an A, capital A, then this is a AMA. Otherwise, fall through as before. Four. Oh yeah, and a uh, addressing mode is a 16-bit value. Let's just create a type for that, I think. I think we also need another special case. Um, yeah, if somebody does a absolute comma Y, hang on, I'm looking at, the, looking at the wrong place. If somebody does an absolute comma Y, and the absolute value is a number, and the number is small, then it will be treated as a zero page comma Y, which is the special fake addressing mode we're just using for these. So we're going to have to work that, or we're going to have to work around that as well. So if the available addressing modes does not contain a Y offset zero page and the addressing mode is 
y offset zero page and change the addressing mode to uh, y off and we'll get rid of that because we do actually want to check the addressing mode at this point because it is very very theoretically possible that there is no y off um, this one doesn't have it just looking for yeah like this instruction this instruction uh, fits the form, but there is no uh, Y off addressing mode. So if somebody does an STY something comma Y, then this will fail. Okay, and that build, it's not gonna work because everything's just balked all over the place, but how big is it? Ooh. That's bigger. Uh, yeah, it is bigger, but this should have added all the rest of the instruction parser. None of the pseudo ops, but there you go. I suspect that the bulk of the size is, where did I put that instruction table? these which are 16-bit values. In fact looking at it there are not very many different kinds so we could save our 49 bytes by indirecting them so that the uh, this field would then be an 8-bit value which we could use to figure out what the full addressing mode type is. But I don't think I will worry about that for now. Let's just have a quick look at this in the hex editor lots of strings here is our actual table which is smaller than I was expecting not that I'd done the maths or anything that's only about 256 bytes that's the, the fix up table which appears on disk but and is loaded into memory, used and then discarded. So that is not technically part of the binary. And that's actually quite big. So our program in reality, I think this is the last byte, which is 16BD. So yeah, uh, we're losing about a thousand bytes on the fix-up table, which we can ignore. But there's a lot of code there, and some of these strings can be made shorter. Okay, so we now have our instruction table and our new improved parser. Although I noticed when I filled out the table that actually some of these opcodes are wrong. Anything which needs a B value added to it actually needs to be the opcode of the B equals zero case. So like STY here, STY, I put that in alphabetical order. That's better. So STY here should actually be a uh, eight four. That should be eight zero. Why is that saying a four? That's L D Y. That is very much the wrong instruction. And S T X, which is down here, needs to be this instruction, which is uh, eight two. And why is that saying eight zero? Because eight zero is this one. 
because I'm looking at the wrong instruction, that's why. Right, STX is 86, this one. This needs to go over here and be 82. Uh, yeah, the shifts are the same, so they want to be again over here because we're going to add on the B value. So that's a 2, so ASL Did I forget to put the shifts in? I forgot to put the shifts in. Let me fix that. Right, I've put those in. There's only four of them. So sort those into place. That again did not sort. Interesting, I am doing the right thing. Yeah, Vim is just ignoring my attempts to sort this for some reason. Okay. So yes, we could actually optimize this quite a lot. I think we could even get rid of both of these bytes by arranging these in order so that we can determine the addressing mode from the position they appear in the list. But I am not going to touch that just yet. But what's our damage? Uh, 24 bytes. Okay, let's run this and actually see what it does. Bad addressing mode. Okay, well, let's strip this down to the minimum. Huh. Okay, that works. This does not work. So this uh, RTS is here, it's an AM imp for uh, implicit. So down in our parse code, we do not want to parse the argument. Yeah, the imp ones are special. So, if the addressing modes include amim, then this is clearly a imp, an implicit addressing mode. Otherwise, parse the argument and just fall through the rest of the code. Okay, what did we get? We got a six zero, which it looks like the right thing, followed by a zero, followed by our uh, fix up table. Don't know where that zero is coming from but the fix-up stuff is all currently broken because I never updated it for the variable length instruction stuff. So let's ignore that for the time being. So LDA label. Okay. That's pointing here, that looks more or less right but I am perturbed by the fact there's an 04 there. I think that, yeah, uh, the calculation code is writing too many bytes. It's trying to write an argument. So this is actually going to 05, which is here. So the calculation code is doing it correctly because that's the right address. Three bytes, four bytes, five bytes. But the emission code is wrong.
which makes me think that I know what's going on. So the reason why it's writing a byte argument is because it's going down here through record expr that is not expecting to get a implicit argument instruction. That is because uh, add expression record here is looking at a uh, token value and token variable here but of course we're not calling parse expression anymore and parse expression is what is actually resetting those so let us actually just simplify things a lot and just omit the opcode and stop So we take that all completely out of line and we're not going through any of this expensive code anymore for implicit instructions. Better. We are, however, still going to have to fix uh, So I was thinking that Shift and A which the machine thinks is an implicit argument instruction is still going to go through this code but of course we have called parse argument in order to, to parse the a therefore it will have correctly set those things in fact we can try that with our new improved parser so raw a AD 0600 6A 00. Brilliant. So, in fact, it is going wrong. Why is it going wrong? It's going wrong because down here we're not calling parse expression, and it's parse expression that is setting token value and token variable to zero. So let's just put that in here. Right. Uh, yeah, that is 6A. Oh, oh, that should not be happening. Okay, so we have this second one here is our uh, A addressing mode, and that's using a B value of 8, which is 1, 2, 4, 8. So that's 0, 1, 0 for the B value, which is... Uh, Two shifted left. Hmm. So now I think that this value is wrong. Why did I put that in? This is AMA is actually implicit, therefore that should be a zero. There we go. So now we have the same addressing mode. The B value is zero. Therefore, it should have generated the right opcode, which means that the calculation code should have correctly identified it as being a zero operand instruction. 
and it still hasn't worked. And in fact, 6200, 6-2 is not the right instruction. Raw A, raw A should be, raw A, raw A, raw A, 6A. I entered the wrong values. I entered very the wrong values. I wanted the values here. Oh, wait, no, I was wrong. That code is right. So this is actually setting B equals two because we want this column here. So uh, all the things in this column from here up, well, in this block, in the, uh, the C equals one block, it, they take one byte of payload. Everything else, they take zero. And I remember now that my code here, for getting the B value from an opcode, getting the effective B value from an opcode, is ignoring implicit instructions completely. Great. Okay. Uh, so C equals two. That's the. Uh, that's this one. Wait. C equals zero one two zero one zero. No, this is C equals two. Uh, so shift instructions with ALU compatible B, B values. This is looking for any shift, including these, which is not right. So we are looking for instructions with a B value of one, three, five, seven. So that is the odd B values. So you want bit two set, which is that one. Zero, one, two. So that should be going through this code to B imp. I wonder if for some reason this is hitting the expression output. So we jump. Uh, right, so we are in. Get in some props, probably. This means we are we should be this is why it's doing it yeah add expression record is assuming that our only instructions with parameters are going through here Okay, that is easily fixed. So 
if So if this is a absolute or a zero page, i.e., you know, a value or an immediate or a relative, these are sucky properties. I need better ones. But we have the size over here, so that will probably do better. Uh, yeah, get instant length if len is not zero, emit the next byte. If len is not one, emit the third byte. Let's try that. What? should have gone through here and got one as the length. So we know it hit this code. From here. Okay, so we shift right by two for this. We then load the flags value into a which is four zero that is a size of one so now we should be here Quite sure what this is doing. Oh, right, it's shifting right by a large value by rotating left. So we now do have the length of one. Okay, so we should now be down here. So we omit that byte. LDA24, which is the 6A. So if you stick a breakpoint uh, at E44 and go, okay, we get the length, which is 1. That's not 0, so we fall through. We load the second byte. Wait a minute. It's only half eleven. I'm not usually quite this dumb. Right, there we go. 6a is uh, 6a is raw a. That is the right instruction. Finally, Okay, uh, let's go. let me just get rid of the breakpoint. So we should have a full set of working instructions. So we can do jump label. No, we can't. Jump should work. But it's not. Did I remember to put that in the table? I believe I did not. This table is expanding. Uh, 
Yeah, um, I'd actually put jump here. I'd put JSR using the jump addressing modes, so that's not right. Uh, JSR is just abs. So jump is 4C and it can be abs or wide indirect. There you go. And that has <laughs> done the wrong thing again. So we have a 2, which is the right address, but it's encoded it as a 16-bit value rather than a... Uh, so it's, enc it's encoded it as an 8-bit value rather than as a 16-bit value. So w int is wide indirect. No, hang on, this is, I'm, I'm using the abs form here. It should be producing a simple 4C, which it's not. So that's got f instruction of 58. So that's wrong. Jump 4C, yeah. And I'm abusing the... Ah, okay. I am incorrectly abusing the B value system. So this is an abs form. It's added on the abs B value of uh, 3 shifted left to and produce entirely the wrong instruction. So that wants to be a full zero. And down here under AM wind, we actually want this to be. So by adding that on, we have the abs value. Uh, we have the, the abs V value that takes us from four zero to four C. And then we should be a two, uh, add on an extra two zero that takes us to the indirect form. There we go. 4C 040060. And that is the fix up table. Uh, first nibble at offset 2. 0, 1, 2. That's correct. Uh, followed by an RTS. And if I were to change this to that and assemble it, we should get the same code, but no fix up because this is an absolute address. Or not. So, parse, parse expression. Uh, that gave us a number. Which was here. That gave us, because it's a small number, it gave us the zero page addressing mode. But the jump instruction does not have a zero page form and it's expecting an abs, therefore that also fails. So we're going to have to have another one of these. So if there is no zero page and the addressing mode is a zero page, change the addressing mode to abs. Better. Uh, and that's produced the wrong result. Fantastic. It's less wrong, but it's still wrong. Uh, let's just print the print token value. Right, that's a zero. 
pass argument has it's failed to pass that thing properly. This should at least be a relatively simple fix. OX0004, that is a valid hex number. Or I'm going mad. Or both. So up here... Oh, that's a. F uh, I hope this isn't the problem that I ran into last time, manifesting in a peculiar way. It looks very similar. We have only gone through. Read token should have repassed the number so we only have one expression and we got a O2 as the uh, token type which is a number So let's let's find our read token. Bet that we have overwritten token value from somewhere. So this should push the last red token. And then this will pull the values back out of the store. So the so token value is also zero before here. And this is only been called once. Okay, let's do this the hard way. Right. F62 is read token. LDA7, we fetch the token look ahead. No, we don't. Uh, is that adjusting the stack? I think that's adjusting the stack. This is the virtual stack used by LLVM MOS. So I think this LDA is fetching the look ahead thing. Uh, and A is two, which is non-zero. So we are indeed fetching the um, the pushed token. 
So the value in A and now in Y is the token look ahead. So here, STX03, we wipe the old version and now we fetch into XY the previous value, which is zero, and write it. Then we fetch the previous variable, which is zero, and we write it, and then we return. And I should have read, re I should have realized that's what was happening because it did actually print this trace. So it's read the number before it hit the breakpoint. Yeah, so the same thing has happened. We have managed to wipe, probably by pushing twice, uh, the value that's been read, which is brilliant. Okay. Uh, so parse. We read the token. It's an ID. We look up the instruction. We know it's not implicit, so we call parse argument. Now, read token here will have cleared the pushed token value. So parse argument here will genuinely read the token. And it sets the values to zero. There we go, 4C0400 and the RTS and no fix ups. It is slowly coming together. I think we are now at a point where we can assemble real code. There's still a ton of stuff missing that will actually like make it, you know, usable. But let me get rid of printf. Yep, and how big is it? Not bad. I mean, still too big, but it's still a plausible size for an assembler. I bet there's a ton of stuff that I can do to, can, to further optimize. But I think that we're actually going to, we're now at a point where the basic assembler is mostly working. We have variable size instructions. We've got labels, we've got symbol tables. We've got all the appropriate encodings, although it's had very little testing. So in order to actually produce useful programs, the next thing we're gonna need is some pseudo ops because we need to be able to define uh, data, BSS, and zero page symbols that will have fixed values. But I'm gonna do that next time. So see you then.